Hey, you. Are you still holding on to your job? How many times have I told you that you should just quit and become a good full-time housewife for my son? Oh, hello, Linda. Nice to hear from you, too. I hope you can understand where I'm coming from when I say this, but... I've also told you many times that I'm not interested in quitting my job and being a housewife. I had hoped we were on the same page about this by now. And besides, it's not like Rick minds me working at all, so I really don't see the issues. If I'm being honest, I think this is an issue that should probably be decided between me and my husband. What? What are you talking about, Paige? You do know that people are calling you selfish for not quitting your job so you can take care of your little girl. What? But I don't think I'm being selfish at all. What could possibly be selfish about working hard at a job that helps provide for your family? But have you thought about the effect you working will have on little Lucy? She probably feels like her mom is ignoring her and doesn't love her. Just think how this might affect her when she gets older. Whatever ends up happening to her will be all your fault. Are you okay with that? You think my child is going to grow up to have lots of issues all because her mom had a job? I really am not seeing the connection there. I'm sorry. Everything I do, I am doing for Lucy. Her well-being is always at the front of my mind, okay? Besides, I'm still with her throughout the day, you know? But what you're doing isn't enough for her. Kids are super keen on these kinds of things and can be really sensitive to a lack of attention from parents. You need to be spending a lot more time than you think with your children, you know. I bet your poor little girl is so lonely without having you around the home to take care of her. I'm sorry, but I just really don't think a lot of what you're saying is necessarily true. Besides, it's not like Lucy is ever really left alone at any point in the day. After all, she is about to start going to preschool with lots of other kids. And when she does start preschool, then I'll be taking off work early every day to go and pick her up. And I'm telling you right now that this is still not enough for her. And your poor little girl is just too much of a sweetheart to say anything to you. Are you sure that that's really what's going on? Anyways, it's fine because Rick is always helping out around the house too. And when I can't be with Lucy, he always makes sure to spend lots of quality time with her. She always seems to be having a lot of fun when they're together. And you think that's a fair burden to put on my poor son? Don't you know how busy he is with his work? He deserves to rest when he comes home. But now you tell me that you're too lazy to be a parent to your own daughter so you make Rick do it. Don't you know that it's the woman's job to raise the kids and manage the home? I'm really sorry, Linda, but I just don't think we share the same beliefs on that topic. Besides, I think that times have changed and that that mentality is a bit outdated. If a couple can hold jobs together, then they can raise their own children together. After all, it's their child, so isn't it only natural that both parents should have a role in raising it? Well, here in my family, we still respect traditional values and don't think like that. I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. My family, my rules. Well, then again, I suppose you are just Rick's wife. It's not like we're really even family. But since you've married in, the least you can do is raise your family how I tell you to. Don't you think you might be overstepping just a little? And don't even get me started on the house. I mean, do you do anything to keep it clean? You just let clothes pile up unwashed, dishes in the sink, dust everywhere. Food left just sitting out. I mean, honestly, do you even try to keep your house clean? Ah, uh, I thought you might try and bring up the state of the house. Last time you came over, you did so without any kind of message or heads up. Then you barged in and started inspecting every nook and cranny for things to nitpick. Anyways, that really wasn't appreciated, so please don't do that again. What could have possibly upset you over my visit? Maybe if you actually kept your home in order, then you wouldn't be upset when guests come over. I didn't tell you I was coming over because I wanted to make a point. And I had to be thorough while I was looking around. Who knows where you might have tried to hide your clutter from me. I wasn't hiding things. And even if I was, it's my house, and I think I have that right if I want. Oh, is that what you think, dear? You just didn't want me finding out what a messy person you are. I never wanted you to marry my precious little boy. He deserves a wife that can actually take care of the house like she's supposed to. Actually, Rick and I do a really good job of splitting the chores. 
And it is true that sometimes both him and I get a little too busy that the housework doesn't get done. But we've never once let it get to the point where it's become a serious issue. We always make sure the house is clean enough that there's never any danger to our health or anything like that. Well, I still don't think it's good enough. I can't stand going over to your filthy house. And I just know my little Ricky feels the same way. After all, I raised him and always made sure the house was spotless as he grew up. I really don't think you have to worry about that, Linda. Rick and I talk regularly, and he doesn't seem to have complaints about the way we live. Oh, my poor, sweet little boy. He must try so hard every day to control himself around you. I just wish he would divorce you already. Okay, I think I'm starting to get a little fed up with this conversation. I would appreciate if you chose your next words very carefully. I'm just so worried about my little boy. He works so hard at his job every day and even makes sure to send a little money back home to me. I've heard that you don't send money back to your parents. Is that true? It's never a bad time to stop being a bad daughter. Actually, I don't send money home to my parents because they really don't need the assistance. Besides, they both still work full-time and haven't reached retirement age yet. I know that you were able to be a stay-at-home mom the entirety of Rick's childhood. But ever since your husband died, you've needed Rick to send money to help you get by. And I'm just ever so grateful to my sweet, sweet son. I did such an amazing job raising him to be the way he is now. Of course, he isn't perfect and has made some wrong decisions in his life, too. Some small and some not so small, that is. Oh, I should have been there to guide him towards a better path. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Anyways, it is our house, not yours, so we will continue to do things our way. Please hold back from giving any more comments or criticism about how you think my house is run. Thank you. Excuse me. Just who do you think you're talking to, young lady? If this is how you really act, then I truly do feel sorry for my poor little boy and my granddaughter. Anyways, I'm quite busy, so I am going to go now. Hi, honey. Did you and my mom happen to talk a little earlier today? My mom sent a message that was mostly just her complaining to me. Yes, we did talk. She was asking me, again, if I was sure about not being a stay-at-home mom. She was just talking about how lonely she thought Lucy must be and how dirty she thinks the house is. Just the usual run-of-the-mill complaints, you know? Ah, I see. I am so, so sorry you are having to deal with her like that. I've told her so many times that you and I happily split the work and manage the house together, but... She's just so set in her old ways and keeps insisting that all this stuff should be handled by the wife. And then she only blames you when the chores aren't done or the house is a little messy. I've tried explaining how things really are to her all the time, but she just doesn't seem to want to really listen to what I have to say. No, no, I understand. It's really okay. Your mom is just the kind of person who really tries to exert her will onto others sometimes. I mean, that's about what I hear from you as well. If I'm being honest, I kind of feel bad for you sometimes, too. You're also kind of a victim in this. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a little. I'm just sorry that all of her anger always seems to be focused on you, though. I really wish there was something I could do or say to my mom to get her to stop with all this. Lately, I just haven't even been trying to tell her the truth because she's getting to be so much. I'm so sorry I haven't done more to try and stop all of this. Rick, I said it was okay and I meant it. I know that you have a lot on your plate and that you're doing your best. And your hard work is really paying off, too. I mean, just look at how well you did on that test last week. You're chasing certifications and always moving one step closer to your dream job. Paige, that's so sweet of you. Thank you so much. But I really couldn't have done any of the things that I have without you by my side, always willing to help. And I know I haven't made things easy on you with all this, but I promise I'll have some good news soon. All I ask is that you hold on just a little bit longer, okay? Of course, baby. You know I'll always be cheering you on. We're going to that barbecue restaurant for a family dinner. We're going to have so much good food. Except for you. You're only allowed to eat from the salad bar. Excuse me? What do you mean I can only eat from the salad bar? Well, you're not family, and this is a family dinner. That's why I say that you can't order anything off the menu. Only the salad bar. 
Maybe you can just get your fill off of all the good smells. What are you even talking about? Don't you think this is just a bit excessive? And here she goes again. The bad wife always arguing with her mother-in-law and never doing what she's told. I really can't stand you, you know that? Why don't you just go home? Okay then. Maybe I will. Good. Leave then. That's what I'm doing. Hey! You evil witch! What did you say to Rick? He is furious with me right now. Did you know even your own daughter said that she hates Grandma now? What kind of evil lies did you tell my family? Wow, did Lucy really say that to you? I guess I've been raising my kid to be a lot tougher than I thought. Honestly, I moved to hear that. Tell me what you told them. Tell me what you said that made my son and granddaughter so furious with me. I got so upset I had to run to the bathroom. Rick even told me that I have to change the way I talk to you. Huh, can you believe that? I would certainly hope that that's the least he said to you, Linda. I've been pissed all day because of the nonsense you were spouting at me earlier. So I talked to Rick and told him all the horrible things that you said to me. He seemed really, really upset with you after I finished telling him everything. You evil harpy. What lies did you fill my poor little boy's head with? What did you do to my sweet, precious Ricky? It was around the time that I was heading towards the restaurant where I thought we would all be eating together. Then suddenly, I got all those nasty messages from you that resulted in me not even showing up. Well, I explained what had happened to Rick and that I was too upset and had to go home. And I guess that that was just about the time that Rick and Lucy arrived to meet you at the restaurant. So that's why it was only those two who were there when I arrived. And what is this drivel I hear about my son not working right now? You're telling me that my son and grandchild have been living off what you've been bringing home. That can't be. I don't believe it. Wow, so Rick finally told you what he's been up to, huh? Well, that was unexpected, if I'm being honest. He told me he would wait until he achieved his goal before finally spilling it all to you. What are you talking about? You talk to me straight, right now or else. What are you going on about? Rick's goal. You better tell me. So, I guess this conversation didn't get very far then, huh? Did you know that Rick has always wanted to be a designer? I'm sure you must have known that about your precious little boy, no? He what? What are you even saying right now? You're telling me that that is what Rick is studying right now? Design? That's right. He went back to school to pursue his passion for design. And that's why I've been working extra hard to provide for all of my family. This has got to be some kind of joke, surely. I thought I made sure those silly dreams of his were put to rest when he was little. Well, for a long, long time, they really were. Do you see? You got in the way of your son doing what he really wanted to do. Now I'm working hard to give him a chance to achieve those dreams you made him give up. He's always been such an obedient son, doing whatever you told him to do. Well, I won't be doing the same. Instead, I'll support him all the way while he finds his own path. You stupid cow. Are you trying to ruin my son's future? Oh, Linda. Isn't that the exact question that I should be asking you? Always making Rick do things he didn't want to. Forcing him to apply for companies that you picked out for him. It didn't matter as long as your expectations were satisfied, right? But I had to. Because of that, he had a comfortable salary and a good job with an amazing company. But you... You made him leave all that behind just so he could chase some childish dream of his. Don't you realize that this will ruin him? Let me tell you something about his job, Linda. Not only was it something that he didn't pick out for himself and never wanted to do, but every day he would come home late after hours of overtime and constantly look depressed. What I'm doing for Rick, I'm doing because I want him to enjoy his life more. I want to support him the way my parents supported me starting my own business. But you have to open your eyes. This is the real world that we're living in. And let me tell you something, young lady. The real world does not give one spit about your dreams. What if Rick fails? What is your plan then? If that's what happens, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But no matter what happens, I'll always be working hard to provide for my family. Because that's what a good husband and wife do. We're there for each other. Well, that's all well and good for you two. But what about Lucy? Aren't you neglecting her by always working so much? 
I mean, just look at the state of your house. That is no way to be raising an infant child. Actually, since I'm working as much as I am, Rick has been taking care of all the housework. Of course, I help him whenever I can, since his first priority right now is taking care of Lucy. What kind of sick family dynamic is that? You make your husband handle the housework? That's just unnatural. In life, there's work work and housework. Since I'm handling the work work, Rick is in charge of the housework. But I guess if you think about it, it's the exact opposite of the way things used to be back in your day. And that's why it's unacceptable. I simply will not allow it to happen. I don't really care what you think. Lucy is always so supportive of how hard her dad works. And when she grows up and has dreams and ambitions of her own, Rick and I will be there to support her in whatever she wants to do. After all, it's all thanks to the way you raised him that Rick was so miserable for so long. What did you just say to me? That's why he is so opposed to raising Lucy the way you raised him. Do you understand everything I'm trying to tell you right now? We are going to do things our own way and make sure our kids are raised the way we want them to be. You think you can just go off and raise kids without grandparents? You'll regret this. No, Linda. I think the one who will be regretting how this turns out will be you. I feel like you should know that the allowance you thought Rick was sending you this whole time was actually from my own earnings. But your own son said it's time that you were cut off. And so from today, you will no longer be receiving your checks in the mail. Wait, what? Then how am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to buy food? I never had to work before. I was a stay-at-home mom my whole life. And this is the result of you thinking that that was the best choice for yourself. I guess you should have thought of a backup plan in case things turned out this way. I've gotten as far as I have in life through my own strength, and that's why I will never be a housewife. Wait, you can't do this to me. I'm your mother-in-law. I was wrong. I understand that. You don't only have to eat at the salad bar. Do you think we could meet in person and talk? There's nothing else I want to say to you. I hope you lead a life that you can be sure you chose for yourself. I'm sure that's the only way you'll know whether your decisions were correct or not. But in my opinion, I think people who have never worked a day in their lives should learn a bit about the real world before telling others how to live. After that, Linda left the bathroom stall of the restaurant and returned to her table. She was still sat there, getting lectured to by her son, when I arrived. I took one look at Linda and told her to enjoy the salad bar before going home with my family. We left Linda there to think about her choices. Linda had a difficult time trying to find a part-time job to help sustain her new life without checks from our family. I've heard that she is barely eking by. But that's just desserts for you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Hey, baby. How are you today? Ugh, awful. Kai has been in pain all day, running around all over the house, and Shia has been crying non-stop. As soon as you get home, you'll handle them, and I'll go for some me time. Well, kids will be kids. Don't worry. I'll run you a nice hot bath when I'm back, and watch them while you unwind. And later tonight, once they're in bed, we can have some time together to relax. I can swing by the sushi shop too if you want. My treat. As nice as that sounds, I'd rather have some time to myself, to get out and have some fun. What? Yeah, so I've called some of the girls and we're going out tonight to let our hair down and relax. I think I deserve it after putting up with those two all day. Oh. Okay, I guess. I said I'd meet them at the bar at 7 tonight, so you need to be home by then to watch the kids. Sweetie, I told you that I wouldn't be able to finish work before 8 tonight. There's no way that I can get back in time. I have patients coming in right up until I leave. Well, you'll just have to find a way. I'm not cancelling these plans. You have no idea how much I need this tonight. I'm not asking you to cancel, but can't you meet your friends a bit later? Surely, waiting an extra hour won't hurt. No. Amber has to work early tomorrow, so she can't stay out too late. So if I want to see her, we need to meet at 7. But Nova, you knew about tonight. Why did you make plans like this without talking to me first? We could have come up with a better way to plan things out. Look, I don't have...
have to tell you everything going on in my life. If I want to go out, I shouldn't ask for your permission. So I'm going out tonight, whether you like it or not. I'm not saying you should ask for permission. I'm just trying to do what's best for our children. How can a three-year-old and a six-year-old manage by themselves for almost two hours? Fine. I will wait until 7.30, but if you're not back by then, well, the kids will just have to be on their own for a little bit. I'm sure if I just put the TV on, they'll sit quietly and watch it for an hour until you get back. You can't just... Fine. I'll be home by 7.30. Great. I've got to get back to work now. Lunch break is over. We'll talk later. Sure. I love you. Hey, sweetie. Just checking in to see how you are. Hope you're having fun. Hey, Nova. I was just wondering what time you're gonna be home. I'm heading to bed soon, and I don't want to leave the door unlocked. Nova, are you okay? You haven't answered any of my messages. I'm just checking in to see if you're okay. Jeez, Jaden, you're blowing up my phone. I'm trying to have a fun night out, not spend it on my phone. I'm just checking in to see if you're okay. I'm fine. Happy now? There's nothing wrong with being worried about my wife. Especially when she hasn't been responding to my texts all night. Ever thought that there might be a reason for that? What? Never mind. Forget I said anything. No, what did you mean by that? I didn't mean anything. Just drop it. Fine. Are you coming home soon? I need to go to bed. No. Do you know when you'll be coming back? In the next hour or so? Am I on curfew or something? I'll be back when I'm back. Can't I just have one night of peace without having to report to you? I'm just trying to get a rough idea. I don't know when I feel like it. I don't want you waking the children up, especially if you've been drinking. Nova. Oh, for Pete's sake. I'm going to bed and I'm locking the door. You can crash at one of your friends tonight. I'll call my mom so she can watch the kids tomorrow while you sleep off your hangover. Don't bother coming back home until you're sober and ready to have an adult conversation. Baby, baby, Jaden, please let me in. I'm cold and tired. Are you ignoring me? I'm sorry for earlier. Please just let me in. Nova, where are you? I was asleep. I'm back. Come let me in so I can go to bed. I told you to stay at your friend's house tonight. I didn't think you were serious. Anyways, I'm here now, so come open the door before I freeze to death. This is the third time this month you've pulled a stunt like this. I really don't want the kids to see you drunk. You promised last time it wouldn't happen again. Look, if you don't open the door, I'll just start yelling and that's sure to wake Kai and Shia up. Alright, alright. I'm coming. But you can bet we're talking about this tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <sighs> Hurry up. Nova, are you awake? I've literally got the worst hangover ever, so I don't really want to be staring at a screen. Okay then, I'll make this short. Why has Amber posted a picture of you last night kissing another man? What? I think you should check your Instagram. Oh, that little... What is going on? I was going to tell you later, when you got home. Guess it's too late for that now. She never did like the fact that I had two guys. She's just jealous. What are you on about? Well, I think it's kind of obvious that I'm seeing someone else. Or did the picture not clue you in? What? But how could you do that to me? To your family? How long have you been seeing this man? We've been talking for a few months now. He's... Well... I think I love him. But why? Well, you're always working. You never make time for me or the kids, and I'm tired of doing nothing with my life. That's not true at all. You know I love you and the kids, and that I try my hardest to spend as much time with all of you as I can. It's not easy being a doctor and trying to get my own practice as well as spending time with my family. 
but we both agreed that we would stick with it until I had my own practice. Yeah, well, I changed my mind. Why didn't you tell me you felt like this? We could have worked on it. Look, it's too late now. Your mom has the kids and I'll be gone by the time you get back. Derek and I are going to travel for a while. It's time I finally had some fun instead of being cooped up all day with toddlers. So that's it? You're just going to abandon your family? Our kids just like that? I'm sure you'll manage without me. Nova, you can't just walk away like that. Don't you have to get back to work now? I can't believe what you're doing. Goodbye, Jaden. Hi, is this Holly? Hi, yes, this is Holly. Who is this? My name is Jaden Walker. I got your number from the nanny agency. Of course, they said you'd be getting in touch with me. How can I help? I was looking for a nanny who could live in the house to help look after my two children. I work long hours at the time. And I just need a bit of help. Of course, I'd be happy to help. What are your children's names? I work long hours at the time and I just need a bit of help. I've got a six-year-old son called Kai and a three-year-old daughter called Shia. They're the sweetest kids. I mean, don't get me wrong, they can be a handful, but they need more stability than I can provide at the moment. I completely understand. When would you like me to start? As soon as you're able to, it would be great. Maybe we could meet up for coffee and go over the details? That sounds great. Friday at 5 sounds good to you. Perfect. See you then. I look forward to it. Hey, Jaden. It's been a while. I'm sorry, who's this? It's me. I'm sorry, this is a new phone and I don't have all my contacts on it yet. Oh, it's your wife. Nova. Nova? Hi. Why are you texting me? Well, I just wanted to check in. It has been four years. How are the kids? They're fine. Do... do they miss me? They did. They couldn't understand why their mommy wasn't coming back home. They were both pretty inconsolable for a while. They got over it, though. I made sure that they were both going to be okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear they took me leaving so badly. Of course they would. You're their mother. Yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't really think about that when I left. Look, what do you want, Nova? I thought that you were living it up with your new man. Yeah, I am. I mean, I was. We kind of broke up. I'm sorry to hear that, but it still doesn't explain why you're messaging me. Well, we broke up because he was cheating on me, and, I don't know, it left me feeling truly awful. Like, I thought we were happy, so why did he do that to me? I couldn't say. Well, then I got to thinking about how I had pretty much done the same to you and how terrible you must have felt. I mean, I hear your business is going well, you've got your own practice and everything, so we'd be able to spend more time together now, me, you and the kids. Plus, with your salary, we could have a lot of fun and make up for lost time. Nova, after all these years, you still haven't changed. You don't care about me or Kai or Shia. You just want someone to pay your way through life while you do whatever you want. I don't want to get back together with you. And I never will. Besides, I don't think my wife will appreciate it either. Your wife? But I'm your wife. No, you're not. You're my ex-wife, as per the divorce papers you signed three years ago. Don't you remember? I just thought that was standard legal stuff. But how did you and this homewrecker meet? Her name is Holly, and she isn't a homewrecker. In fact, you're the one who wrecked our home. She is the one who helped it put it together again. And as for how we met, she was the kids' nanny. After you abandoned us, I needed help balancing and looking after them and working. So I hired Holly as a live-in nanny. Over time, we got to know each other and turns out we actually liked each other quite a lot. The rest is history. But what about us? There is no us. 
You made sure of that four years ago when you left your family for another man. That's something you're going to have to live with. Well, what about Kai and Shia? They're still my kids as well. Along with those divorce papers, you also signed over full custody of the children to me. Basically, you have no legal rights to see or visit them unless I say so. So what? That's it? You're just going to take everything away from me for one silly mistake? I will let the kids know that you're about and it will be up to them if they want to see you. However, it will be under my supervision. We can get a family counselor to help us sort out the details. As for us, well, I will only talk to you in relation to the children. Apart from that, I don't want any contact with you. I have a new life now, and I couldn't be happier. Holly treats me with respect and loves me just as much as I love her. I just hope that one day you'll be able to find the same happiness I have. Jaden. Goodbye, Nova.